Well, it depends, to be perfectly honest, how gloomy you are on the economy uh, and also your view as to how sensible Nordic banks are about uh, taking write-offs. Um, I'm, I'm always a sort of long-term bear and, and I have very, um, no, very severe worries about the, the European outlook going forward. So I'll start with that and then, and then perhaps just turn to uh, what, what, what the banks are doing. Um, my, my view is that there's, there's a lot yet to go wrong in Europe. It might not go wrong, but uh, if you think about what, what could go wrong, the IMF says that by the end of next year, European banks have to write off um, $700 billion of debt. Now, if you look at a, a big, big rights issue, like the Nordair rights issue, that was only 2.5 billion euros. So, you know, we're talking about a hell of a lot of debt that has to be written off across Europe uh, by the end of, uh, uh, of next year. Uh, whilst there has been a, um, a stock market rally, the stock market is normally at least six months ahead of the real economy, um, a lot of the um, private equity blow-ups, and let's face it, private equity accounts for 15% of Sweden's GDP, a lot of those blow-ups have not yet taken place and will take place uh, later, later this year. Uh, we, we did a survey recently which said that, um, that well, everybody, almost everybody thought that um, uh, blow-ups uh, in private equity uh, and over-leveraged companies will, will peak in, in the fourth quarter of this year. So there's all that to come through. Um, there is the possibility, and I believe a real possibility, of um, some countries having to either pull out of the euro, some peripheral countries having to pull out of the euro, or the, there being some form of uh, devaluation with countries that are somehow pegged to the euro. So that will cause um, shocks to the system as well. And um, there's, an, there's a huge, huge level of deleveraging that is going on across the world. Um, and even though um, stock markets are bouncing back up, banks are simply not lending what they used to lend. And in the United States, for example, uh, this year, uh, there are $200 billion uh, worth of um, commercial mortgages which need to be re refinanced, most of which were taken out of 90% loan to value. Um, now you can only get 60% loan to value, and the property prices have fallen. Um, the other thing that's taking leverage out of the system is uh, there's actually a wave of um, protectionism that people don't notice, which is a kind of balance sheet protectionism. As you know, um, just about every national government across the world is supporting its own banks, but very few of them are supporting those banks when those banks are lending overseas. Um, they're, they're simply helping them in their home markets. So what's happening is banks are retrenching to their home markets and not lending abroad, and, and the domestic banks can't take up all of the slack. So all of that deleveraging is continuing to, to occur. Um, and I'm afraid that means you know, again, some companies will fall over when it comes to, to refinancing. So all in all, I'm kind of gloomy about the outlook for the next two years. And then if you look at what's happening in the Nordic region, what does that mean for the banks? Well, banks here are very special because they, they tend to hold their loans to maturity. And if they hold, hold their loans to maturity, they don't have to um, mark to market and they don't have to um, you know, keep, keep, keep taking write-offs. A lot of Nordic banks who are in international syndicates are holding loans at 100%, senior loans at 100%, where other banks are holding them at 50% in their books. And from talking to all the banks here, what, what I do seem to find is that people are putting off the evil day um, at which they have to take write-offs to, to a far greater extent than they are across the rest of Europe. And that's on top of uh, the Nordic countries being late cycle. So I think there's a there's a you know quite a big wave of uh, of bad news and write-offs that will have to be taken um, in the future, and I, I can't I can't assess the size of uh, additional capital that would be needed for that, but I would not be surprised if additional capital is needed sometime next year. Okay, does it mean for for all the four Swedish big banks, or is it? Uh... Well, I don't really want to point fingers. I mean, uh, <laughs> a number of. Um, British banks have done sizable rights issues. A number, well, one in particular, has uh, has raised a little bit of capital. Uh, but if you look at its core tier one ratio compared to the rest of Europe, um, it's out of line. Now, the Economist had a, a report on that bank.
say, you know, we, we hold this up as an example of a bank that's, that's got it right. But um, I don't know. Time, time, will, time will tell. You don't agree with the economist, Dan? Uh, I don't really want to be drawn to that. <laughs> a number of my very good friends work there. <laughs> he means hands back. John, do you, do you agree with uh, James that um, the four big Swedish banks may need to do uh, two rights issues and uh, perhaps one have to do it? What do you think it would happen if I said yes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't agree. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, first of all, I agree that we will see more uh, credit losses. I mean, provisions and credit losses, but the, the effect of what has happened over the last six or nine months has not come through the system yet, and uh, there will be more distressed companies and more credit problems going forward uh, in the Nordic area as well, uh, in addition to the Baltics. However, I think that the market is exaggerating the extent of that. Uh, I think it's manageable within what uh, the Swedish banks has today. They, they are all uh, making a lot of money as you go along uh, now, uh, and uh, some of them have really good buffers, and this will happen over a number of years. So I, I, uh, I think that Swedish banks are in good shape as well. I mean, let me be clear: there's no, there's no possibility of banks going down. I mean, we're, we're not in in that um, terrible period we were at the end of last year, where we didn't really know what was happening. The government's got all the tools in place, you know, all governments across Europe have got all the tools in place uh, to, to stabilise the banking system. So that's, that's not the issue. The issue is, is really where the banks will need to take on additional capital at some stage in the, in the future for prudent purposes or to simply catch up uh, with their competitors across Europe because things have actually moved up in terms of the level of quality and what capital that people need to have uh, on their balance sheets. So it's nothing to worry about. It's just that um, you know, I, I think there may be circumstances where the banks will need to come back to the markets, not in a distressed situation, but, but for sensible purposes. <laughs>